Welcome to the 35th edition of WWMS. I am Chase Kerber and later joined by our geopolitical friend Arif Kapoor and soccer fanatic Noah. Let's head into our joke of the week. The teacher, you missed school yesterday. The student, well, I didn't really miss it. We hope you all enjoyed that very funny joke. We have many things to break down in today's episode, including, including Ramadan, St. Patrick's Day, and Purim. Let's head into Holiday Haven. What's up, dudes? Today I have two holidays to tell you about. To begin, Purim is a popular Jewish holiday, which is sometimes referred to as the most festive Jewish holiday of them all. The date celebrated generally fluctuates due to it being based on the Jewish Luni solar calendar, which is different than the regular Gregorian calendar, but it generally is in mid to late March. Purim represents the time period in about 400 BC when a Persian king's advisor felt like really threatened by the Jewish population in Persia at the time, so he decided to have them killed for some reason. At this point, with permission from the king, of course, in his, in his all-powerful self, he picked the execution date and began to have the gallows assembled. Shockingly, a Jewish queen in Persia at the time, Esther, was able to persuade the king to stop this genocide through the king's power. And on this day, in Jews around the world go to synagogues and they have plentiful feasts to celebrate this holiday alongside their family. Separately, Ramadan is a holiday observed by over 2 million Muslims worldwide. This holiday is celebrated during, during the ninth month of the Muslim Luni Solar Calendar, similar to the Jewish Luni Solar Calendar, which I just touched on, in that the holiday will move forward 10 days each year. And during this month, it was believed that the Prophet Muhammad, who is the Jesus equivalent, the Son of God, began delivering the verses of the Quran, or the Muslim version of the Bible, to the people. As a form of thanks for this enlightenment and enrichment, Muslims observe one of the five pillars of Islam during this ninth month. One of these is fasting. To do this from dawn to dusk, observing people use this time of, as a time of self-restraint and reflection. They refrain from drinking alcohol, impure acts, eating or, and eating or drinking from dawn to dusk. They generally wake up for a pre-sunset meal called Sahur when they pray and prepare for the coming day of fasting. They break fast with a meal called Iftar, which they eat alongside a date and three consecutive sips of water to observe the end of a Ramadan fasting. The, month is, the end of the month is commemorated by a holiday called Eid El Fitr, where they have a plentiful feast, ending the beautiful month of Ramadan. And with that, you guys know the drill. Peace out, dudes. Also celebrated last week was St. Patrick's Day. The holiday, which takes place on March 17th of every year, is in honor of St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland. It has been popularized in the U.S. because of people from Ireland coming to the U.S. and spreading the traditions St. Patrick spread. The reason many don't know why St. Patrick's Day is green is because green represents the shamrock, which honors St. Patrick, and when he spread Christianity to Irish people. Happy St. Patrick's Day to all who celebrate. It is March Madness time. Now, some of you may be wondering what that is. Well, if you haven't heard of it, you either, one, live under a rock, or two, live under a rock. In all seriousness, March Madness is the men's and women's college basketball tournaments that start in mid-March and end in April. 68 teams are cut down to 64, teams to 32, to 16, to 8, to 4, to 2, and then there is a crown NCAA tournament winner. It is considered madness because when 68 teams are participating, anything can really happen. So we've seen what was seemingly impossible become possible. That is why it is March Madness. Believe the unbelievable, expect the unexpected, however you want to put it. This year we have many teams that may not be we, this year we have many teams that may be able to take home the trophy from both tournaments. Both the reigning champions from the men's and women's tournaments, UConn and LSU, both have retained many of their stars and are right back in a favorable position to win the tournament. Five Connecticut teams are participating as well, shining some light on a state that never really shows its its athletic ability in any other month. You can see a Connecticut College basketball preview here on the Fairfield Woods Middle School YouTube channel, or you can see a full March Madness preview on the Cool Sports Network Chase and Chase's Sports News YouTube channel. Now let's dive into our soccer news. Last Sunday was the La Liga match between FC Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. It ended with Barcelona on top, with the final score being 3-0. Three goals of the match were scored by Joao Felix, Robert Lewandowski, and Fermin Lopez, in that order. Atletico came pretty close to scoring, with three shots on target out of 13 total shots. FCB had nine total attempts on goal, with five being on target. 
Not too long ago, I got to sit down with longtime sports reporter and now college announcing director, Neil Hartman, and he talked about his career experiences, including sparking one of the more memorable press conference moments in sports history. So your first major role came at Comcast Sportsnet. How did the opportunity come about to go to CSN and explain exactly what you did over there in your time there? Um, when I came here to Philadelphia, I worked uh, for the Philadelphia 76ers doing their studio work. And I did the studio work for the Phillies. I did some play-by-play for the Sixers for a couple of years as well. And then I uh, so did some college basketball. Uh, I worked at the CBS affiliate here in Philadelphia. When NBC, or actually at Comcast Sportsnet, they bought the Sixers and the Flyers, and they started this regional sports network, Comcast Sportsnet. And, and I was pretty you know, pretty established here in the market. And, and um, they, they came talking to me about, you know, coming over and being their lead uh, primetime anchor for um, Comcast Sportsnet, which is now NBC Sports Philadelphia. And there's these regional networks all over the country. Absolutely. Now, I know one of the more funny and I'd say memorable press conference moments in Philadelphia history and sports history was Allen Iverson's practice rat. How was kind of that experience being a part of Something like that. One of the more funny moments in history. Well, I guess it's going to be on my gravestone when I when, when, when I pass. It's going to say he was the guy that asked Allen Iverson the question about practice. So I was the one who initiated the discussion about practice. And there weren't a ton of people in the press conference, but it was carried live on Comcast Sportsnet at the time. And I was right there uh, in the press conference room. Now, you have to understand, I'd covered Allen Iverson from when he was drafted all the way through his career. Allen Iverson had a phenomenal year. They went to the NBA Finals and lost yeah, in five games. He won the MVP. Um, then the next year, they played. Uh, they didn't have a great year. And Allen didn't have, a, a by Allen Iverson's standards, a great year. And the Sixers lost in the first round. And then a couple of days later, they had this press, press conference. And, and Allen, um, you know, just look, he, he wasn't in, in the right frame of mind. Now, you have to understand that his, his Hall of Fame coach, Larry Brown, had talked about all season long that Allen didn't really focus on practicing. There's no doubt that Allen Iverson, when he was on the floor, he played his heart out every time he was on the floor. There's no debating that. But he didn't give all his time and effort in practice. So my question was, what, what can you say about you know, how you approach practice, that type of thing? And, and he initially started off very even keel and then kind of just went off the rails. And he said practice 22 times. You know, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. Fast forward to... Uh, 2016, when Allen went into the Basketball Hall of Fame, and I asked uh, Allen, Allen, do you know who asked you the question about practice? And he says, I do not. And I said, it was me. And he looked at me and he goes, and I liked you. More than 20 years later, he still hears the word practice. Are there any other moments, either on camera or off camera, that kind of stand out from your broadcasting career? What happened in 1980, Chase? What happened in 1980, Winter Olympics? What happened? Um, Miracle? Miracle on Is that Miracle? Yep. Miracle Al Michaels, ice. Miracle on Ice. Yep. What did, and what did Al Michaels say? Uh, do you believe in miracles? Right. And this guy was right next to him. Wow. So I was I right next to him. Al, 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 Al Michaels, when he said, do you believe in miracles? I was his production assistant. I was right next to him. Uh, the United States beat the Russians 4-3 and uh, go on to win the gold medal the next game. And um, But I was there. Thanks so much to Neil, and the full interview will soon be on the Cool Sports Network, found on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Now let's head into our trivia. What is the daily meal consumed after breaking fast about Ramadan? Who persuaded the king to prevent his genocide from happening? What was St. Patrick's role in Ireland? Who won the NCAA tournament championships in basketball last year? And how many times did Allen Iverson say practice in his press conference? That will do it here for an action-packed episode of WWMS. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the coming holidays in March Madness games. Alongside Arm and Noah, signing off for February 1st. I will see you next time. This is my face when I get an 86 on my math test. Isn't that amazing? You just start. You just started recording. Oh, I guess it's like a behind the scenes for some people. And action. <coughs> Not a good start. <laughs> action. Kapoor and soccer. No, I gotta restart. I'm not doing another action. Now let's dive into our soccer news. Last Sunday was the La Liga match. Oh, that's, that's Noah. Now 
more questions in the desk yet. A zoom. A zoom in. I can't. I don't know how to zoom in. Okay. Thanks so much for watching, and, and enjoy the coming... Uh, hold on. Let's go!